Okay, uh, so it is 8.06. Um, happy December. Uh, start with the review, uh, or start with the review of the minutes. Anybody have any questions or concerns? I had a question actually um, about the um, nitrogen generator for the, the um, sprinkler system. I can't remember if I asked this before because um, it says it will cost approximately $24,000 I assume to purchase this but we also have to keep in mind the maintenance to operate it operating costs so I, I imagine there's costs to that too yeah, yeah, I, I, so I'm, I've got no information on that kind of thing I, I feel like I might have asked something I don't know if it was specifically about that well, from what I understand, that will prevent us from having to spend additional funds down the road. Right, but we probably have to, I don't know, I assume we pur purchase the nitrogen periodically to mm -hmm. keep it in the lines. It's not like a one-time purchase. There's going to be costs to keep it going year after year. So we need to keep that in mm -hmm. mind. That's a good point. I mean, like topping it off if, if we if we purge a system or something. Yeah. Or, I mean, I would agree. Anytime you add a system, you have to maintenance that system. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, will they, if that cost will that cost more than the general maintenance of the current system, where they're flushing lines every periodically and that kind of stuff? That's a it's a good Bob question. I think so. Yeah. You ask him. What's your problem? He actually could. <laughs> Okay, so that's not really a change. That's just no. a question. Just a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's so something we'd like to answer by the next one, next meeting. Um, it would be nice to have because we're doing the budget. So as yeah. we think about the budget. Yeah. I also discovered yesterday, which was too late to change the agenda, that the um, you guys did not vote on the. Um, on the plan. school improvement plan. We right. didn't put it back in for a vote. It's not okay. on the agenda as a vote. Um, okay. So, you know, it'll be up to you if, if you feel. I mean, Chrissy's ready to present it now. You could do. Uh, you could hold the vote over to next time, or you could tentatively vote it, and it just we can put it on the next one agenda for the official vote. Are you okay? We vote on the school improvement plan. Um, it's today. On, it's not on the agenda. We had so. talked about it last meeting. Yeah. Are yeah. we allowed to do that? I'm okay. But you know what? You, you could temporarily vote it today, yeah, and then we'll just we we'll, we'll, I'll put it again. on the agenda just to do it uh, to next affirm time. it the next time. You know but at what I mean? least it's sort of. At least she can move forward, forward and not feel comfortable. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay. Preliminary vote. Okay. So are we ready to pass the minutes? Sure. Um, motion. I second it. All in favor? Okay. Great. Um, financial statements. So Judy, welcome to our meeting. Thank you. Um, I have a stack of wants for you, Sam. I'll, start, I'll, with I'll you. start with that for you. Um, we have three sets of results that uh, we requested. One is um, the monthly expenditure report um, mm -hmm. for your local funds. You're looking in really good shape um, for this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Halfway, you're halfway through the year. You haven't gone through half of your budget yet, so. I don't see any lines that cause any real concern as I look at this. Um, I saw one negative, which is a stipend for curriculum developers. Mm -hmm. We had nothing budgeted, and I see we paid eight hundred dollars on something for a stipend for that. Yeah, I'm not sure it? what it was. Uh, and I don't know what yeah. I can certainly I find that answer for you. Um, I figured that, so I didn't know if you most of that work got done over the summer, so I'm not sure if it's just. Someone submitted an honorarium after the summer okay. was over. It's just a question here on the second page there. Mm -hmm. where we have a negative $800. Yeah. So. yeah, I noticed there's a couple of small things yeah. that we can take care of, but I mean, nothing of huge concern. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, since we started the year uh, September, no, August, is it August 1st, I see that we spent money legal, uh, school committee legal fees. Have we so that would be for the ongoing retainer? Okay. As well. Okay. Um, I can see if there's anything. Um, I'm trying to think, but 
we have not really done anything. There's been no legal issues right. here outside of re me reviewing contracts or that kind of stuff. But okay. Outside, you know, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any carryover from the year last starts year. July first. July first. Yeah, so so but that was all yeah. kind of straightened out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, I noticed that you're using a lot more lines that are more um, accurate, mm -hmm. which also creates negatives. Yeah. Because there were no budgets in those lines right. before, so yeah. that's so. helpful actually, though, to see where the money's being spent. Right. So. And making sure that it's coded properly for right. reporting purposes as well. And I didn't, nothing jumped off the page. I had a couple of small negative balances, but um, you know, overall, you're in a very healthy place. Mm -hmm. um, you still have 66.21% remaining, um, and at halfway through the year, that's a great place to be. Right. Um, so now, a lot of that will be eaten up by salaries so as yes. we go forward. Yeah. So but your sort of discretionary expenditure lines, you know, school supplies, things like that, that all happens very early on, so mm -hmm. there's not a lot of that activity mm -hmm. happening, because obviously, um, you know, Kristen doesn't want to uh, be trying to buy, scramble to buy supplies, everything gets yeah. bought up front, so a lot of those lines are all done, so basically, um, yeah, you're looking at the bigger items in terms of salaries and those kinds of things, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to me. Um, and then at your request, um, we put together a couple of reports on your revolving accounts, just kind of showing the activity in those accounts. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a little bit of analysis uh, based on the starting balances in those account accounts as well. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, so that you can actually see what your uh, cash flow is. So I'll pass this around. That's the school choice one. It comes in with Jaffa one. Um, but I uh, just showed your starting balance. Um, it's kind of hard to read the financial software statements. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little tough. So. So we're basically, um, we're looking at school choice. Your starting balance coming into the school year was two hundred five thousand nine hundred twelve dollars and forty four cents. Uh, mm -hmm. You've gotten uh, almost ninety four thousand dollars in tuition. So you total opening uh, balance plus revenue received is just shy of three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And then um, you can see year to date. Um, what has been spent out of that account. So again, you've got a healthy, positive cash balance. Mm -hmm. um, and the same is true with uh, the early childhood uh, fund. Again, you started the year with 60,783.25. Um, you've gotten 33,405 and change in revenue and in tuitions. So again, that, uh, you know, in terms of cash flow, you started with 94,000 and change. Um, your expenses to date are 67, almost $68,000. So again, you're in just, uh, I mean, 26, your balance, excuse me, your balance no, at this point is almost $68,000. So again, cash flow wise, you're in a really good spot um, for both of those funds. And obviously, you'll have more school choice and more tuition money coming in as the year progresses. What, so. How does the school choice money come in? Do you know how that, what the pattern is there? Is it like one big lump sum? Or is it um, it comes in on <coughs> a monthly basis. It usually, does? Yeah. Usually the Department of Revenue, it's, uh, you know, they sort of base it on your um, October 1 counts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again in March, when you do your enrollment again, mm -hmm. uh, the state dips in and sort of uses a full-time equivalency number mm -hmm. to backpedal either, you know, sucking more money back right. away from you or giving you more if you have more kids in. So oh, okay. um, that's kind of how they work it out. So it's um, not necessarily an even stream mm -hmm. of revenue when it comes in uh, month to month, but it's something that... So there is money coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the one thing I noticed is the $214,000 balance in the school choice mm -hmm. is less than our the rest of our budget in the school choice right. account. Right. Yeah. So yes. for those that are new, we used to have enough money in the account to cover the whole budget all year mm -hmm. before, while we weren't waiting for the revenues right. to come in. And now we're in this place where we have to rely on the revenue. So it's just we want to be playing, right? and that's certainly something we we'll continue to monitor for yeah. as well. But so. early education, we are not in that situation. No, we're in a good spot there. 
enough to cover the rest of the year if we had to, even so though there's more money coming in. Is the goal to start next year with roughly the same balance going forward as we had at the beginning of this year, or? It used, be nice. to be, <laughs> it used to be the conventional wisdom that you sort of relied on the year's prior income mm -hmm. to build your budget. Um, with budgets increasingly tightening and Chapter 70, the legislature just can't seem to get that across the finish line for whatever reason. Um, I think that um, it's a case of, that's not, you know, you have to be a little more mindful of that. So mm -hmm. again, as we get closer to the end of the year and as we start budget planning, trying to project out, you know, how many school choice kids do you have coming in? How much revenue is that approximately? What do you think you'll end the year with? So that you know going forward what your mm -hmm. open balance will be. So those would be some of the projections we need to do. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Over the years, um, with school choice money, um, we used to be able to use it more for kid-related things. Now we're using it for more for salary-related things. And I know why we do it to try to keep our budget down and put things over to school choice, but if we do have a year where we might be able to take some of these salaries and put them back into the budget because we took them out of there at one time to help that, you know, two and a half or less budget, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a firm believer if we can <coughs> get some of these salaries off of school choice and put them back into our budget, I think I, Yeah. Well, that's the next question. We, well, that's, <laughs> it's a difficult balancing act. It yeah. really is because, again, if you're looking at salaries and you're paying, them, you're relying on school, you choice know, school choice or grants or whatever else, you really have to be very careful about that. So, just thinking through, um, you know, is it salaries you want to put into those pots, or is it something else you want to put into those pots, and can you put enough of something else into those pots right. to make it work? Right. Those are sort of the and overarching think, questions. And I have information from the, um, from the collaborative regarding where the uh, school choice trends are and where Waitley sits in comparative. And there's a few schools like Waitley um, that you have to be very careful because it's, it's supplementing your budget with school choice. Mm -hmm. And if that ever changes, you got you got to. So if you start putting salaries on school choice and then you get a drop in school choice, then you're you when you have to adjust your your what you're spending on. So. You know, as Judy was saying earlier, is that the old process was <clears throat> you always had that money in the rear, so to speak. It was kind of like a, a savings account to work off of to buy the extras that you were saying for the kiddos. Um, you know, supplies, you know, you know, equipment, a capital fund, you know, capital expenditure, that kind of stuff. But now that Waitley is in the position where it is using those funds moving forward, so um, we do have to keep an eye on what our choice numbers are, and if there's ever a big fluctuation, then we're going to have to adjust accordingly. And either at that point, this committee will have to decide. How it makes up the shortfall? You know, yeah. Does it increase the budget to, to the town? Does it find other ways to things, or does it make cuts? You know, so um, right now we're healthy, and there's right. no there's no, well reason, there's no reason there's no reason there's no reason that right exactly. So it's it's good to understand that that's a different. Mm -hmm. um, most schools are not in the situation that we present. Right. Um, there are other schools similar to you, but most schools in the valley are not balancing in that such way. Because it, it used to be really nice to have a rainy day fund. Because mm -hmm. Tom would say, well, geez, you do have $50,000 in your school choice money. Right. Mm -hmm. But we are also, if something happens, we can dip into it. Well, we really can't dip into it if we had an emergency <coughs> that we needed thirty or forty or $50,000 like we used to have years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, now we're, instead of you know sp spending in the rear, we're spending a year ahead of time monies Right? And right, we're spending a year ahead of monies, and right. it's like the current year. we're robbing the from current Peter year. to pay yeah. for Paul is right. is right. a proper right. way of saying it. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not sure if what we're doing with the budget this year, or how our budget is that that you guys are working on, but you know, maybe something one of these could come out and be put into our budget to give us a little bit more, so we don't take in the future money to pay for these that we can pay for it out of, out of our regular budget and stuff, but. When the time comes, we may we may have to, and then you know, hopefully the school choice kids keep on coming in, so it yeah. does help us a lot. I mean, my thing is I think we just need to keep thinking of the budget as three pieces. It's the general fund, the school choice, and the early yep. education. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the whole budget for the mm -hmm. school. It's not just the general fund that mm -hmm. keeps us going. Mm -hmm. So, 
Okay. Welcome, welcome aboard. And Thank you. Nice presentation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just know that sometimes looking at ledger sheets on the counting software is like, yeah, what no, this, this is very hard. <laughs> I did this myself. <laughs> Um, and then the salaries, you did outline the salaries. There was a yes. report um, that showed which salaries are coming right. from which sources. From which sources. So again, um, just so you could see who's, uh, you know, who's who and what's what. Because um, I think the idea was that all the classroom teachers and the, were always in the general budget. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to move a few. I know we moved this set cafeteria recently just to kind of try and um, reinforce whichever positions we can. Um, so it's mostly the aides that are in the school choice budget. Right. Um, and as you can see, um, early childhood is mm -hmm. funded from two sources. Um, you know, your Spanish teacher is from school choice, your reading teacher is from school choice and your REAP grant, so it's not in your local budget. Uh -huh. um, and then, um, You've got one clerical salary that's covered by early childhood tuition, um, you know, the cafeteria, um, actual uh, payroll as we've projected it out versus what you budgeted for it. That's in a good place. Mm -hmm. um, the instructional aid is uh, again in a good place as well. Um, custodians. Um, you have a custodian vacancy. We have an open position. Right. Yeah. So <coughs> while that looks. Like a nice we don't want to lower that Fifteen thousand dollar <laughs> number. Um, yeah, you, until you get that that filled, um, you know that will certainly impact that in the future. So, mm -hmm. so again, just kind of a little snapshot in time, which every budget is. So, um, unless it specifies it's from the general fund. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And early childhood can only go to pay for things related to early childhood. Correct. Right, so. Correct. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. But it's great that it is started seemingly covering most of its expenses, which is yes, was the uh, the question when it's the we first started. So great, so we're in good shape on the budget to start for that next year. Mm -hmm. Any um, other questions? So, like the Spanish and the reading, does it say somewhere how much of school choice is covering that? All of school cho uh, Spanish is the covering whole, all of the okay. school choice, and the reading is 50-50 between those two funding sources. There's a little more than that coming out of school choice, though. I mean, it's like 150,000, 170,000. So I was thinking there must be something else also in there. Um, for salaries? For teacher salaries. But are you probably on? There are, some instructional, right there are some right, instructional aids. aids that are out of uh, school choice as well, so yeah. that's why that uh, you know, looks a little bit higher. What's the difference between a SPED aid and a regular instructional aid? Is there a difference? Or is, like, is, it, is a SPED aid in addition to a classroom aid? Yeah, it would be driven by a child's IEP. Right, IEP. Right, mm -hmm. right, and then if it's a school choice, if it's if a SPED aid, is directly working with school choice student, we will get additional school choice funds to cover that. To yes. cover that, so mm -hmm. you get five thousand plus the additional needs mm -hmm. required by the IEP. Okay. So, and are those usually one on ones? It depends yes. on it depends on um, the need. Okay. You know, um, and a lot of times we may not call it a one to one, but if that there maybe. Defer to Chrissy, but they may be focusing on that, making sure that child's set before getting everybody else around the child set. They may be more focused there. Trying to get away from a lot of just one to one IAs where they are assigned just one person. Oh, yeah. So the it would be increased way. adult assistance, would be what the, the IEP would say. That would be more in high school and sometimes. Even in high school, we're trying to go away from that model where okay. they're, they're helping the entire class with a focus on the, the, the one or mm -hmm. two students that have the increased. Um, sometimes you will get one to ones with it. I don't think it's happening lately, but you know, specialized programs where the student, you know, literally needs assistance, you know, every, every almost every moment, you know what I mean, um, or monitoring to assistance every mm -hmm. moment. And so that's going to be more specialized programs rather than general. So. Yeah, I just noticed they were broken out <coughs> two different lines. Mm -hmm. That's also for uh, end of the year for reporting, reporting purposes. Reporting. You yeah. have to have classify your regular expenses and your specialized. Expenses separately from each other. Purposes of state reform. Okay. Any other questions? Or? 
thank you. It's very clear. I appreciate yes. all the extra work. On it. Oh, you're welcome. Be helpful as we head into the new budget season. Okay. So, public comment. Is there anybody here that would like to make a comment? No. No. Mary. Nothing. Enjoy the coffee and donuts. <laughs> um, unfinished business. So is there more to talk about on capital projects? Or I can just, just give you an update on, um, right now we have the, <clears throat> we had to redo the bids for the sprinklers. Mm -hmm. um, they're expected to be in next week and there's already a few interested parties. Oh, so okay. mm -hmm. um, they're already talking with um, Ms. Curtin on the side regarding when they could come in and do it. And if it can't happen during vacations, if there's any disruption to the building, how would that look like? Can we do some rotating of, you know, to speak for Christy? Um, <laughs> you know, we can may we may be disturbed the upper level class if she really wants not to disturb the lower level class in the sense that maybe have to move them out of the room for a day so they can get that room done. But okay. they're trying to figure out that allows the, the less specifics you can get within the bid about when they can come in, the, the, better. the better we yeah. can get financially. So, so that's good that we got bids because we were worried we weren't going to get We were concerned. Bids, so. so we'll see if they're. Viable. Viable. But that, those are next week. And um, the generator is in. Um, they put the line in. They now have to make the entry into the building. building basically, build a, okay. uh, drill a core hole. That kind of thing. That's supposed to happen next week. So, both things are. This meeting was next week. I'd have a lot, a lot more to share on those two projects. <laughs> so, the, the bids with um, the sprinklers, that's. So, that's out. That it's includes um, that prevailing minimum wage, that whatever that, I don't even know what that means. Correct. Jason, what that means. Yeah. yeah, somebody yeah. can't undercut somebody else by paying their yeah. workers less yes. than what is sort of the average wage for that classification of employee. So it's uh, a way to make sure that employees are being paid fairly, um, you know, during the bid process and that somebody can't get a bid because they're not going to pay their employees okay. the way they should. Something they require when they do like public projects. Okay. So. And the phones and telecoms, that's the other one that's always lingering. Like the clocks. We have clocks. Clock. We do have clocks. clocks. So where's the clock? Oh, it's over there. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we still cannot make announcements from any phone other than the 1980s style phone that's on the list. But we know we can come. But that's We can come from small. <laughs> we have a great new conference phone. <laughs> So the next is the intercom, final the intercom. Yeah, I think that's the only piece that's left. Okay. okay. It's kind of a big piece though, safety-wise. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else in the capital projects? Yeah. Um, marijuana facility, I know Maureen was good about going to the last few meetings. So, so the planning board, approved they voted and approved to send it to the zoning board and then the zoning board meeting was the other night bob and i were there and chrissy came after her school uh school council meeting but that part had already yeah. finished um they did not vote because they were down a member a voting member um, so they're going to vote i think december 20th maybe but it sounds like it's going to go through i did ask um like, if it gets approved and, you know, they've got their criteria, there's supposed to be no odor, you know, whatever the there's other... There's like seven things they were... Well, those are changes they were making to okay. the plan, but part of the criteria. I want to know, um, after it's approved, they start their business, they're growing, all that, what, um, what plan, to make sure there was a a plan in place that they were going to continue to meet the criteria that it mm -hmm. wasn't just that they're approved okay there they go and then they could just go off and right nobody is going to be checking monitoring them. monitoring um it's the zoning board said that's not part of their job mm -hmm. um that it would be going to i think the board of health and health the agent. building inspector we're a small town i don't know if we have a full-time Board of, I thought maybe the Board of Health was a volunteer position. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. They get paid. No, I think it's from the county. 
we you know we do have a board of health and they do get paid mm -hmm. just like just like we do i uh we do have a uh, health and health we have a from i think the per lady if it's the same lady she lives up in greenfield but she's our our agent or whatever as mm -hmm. you know somebody that works with the board of the okay. board of health and stuff so but she's not going to be a 24 hour 24 7 position and we have evening and weekend things and if there was something i i think we need to get some sort of a policy or procedure in place and maybe we need to meet with some of these board of health building inspectors to find out what the plan is because i i'm not comfortable just letting it go i think we need to make sure there's a plan in place and i think well didn't they also say something about if they had somebody calling complaining about we'll say odor or something like that then you would have to call the board of health i'm not sure if you can call you'd have to call, call one the of those police two, and ask them about it too you know it didn't seem clear yeah. if they did not right. that wasn't part of their job so right. i don't think it's clear who we call or right what the procedure is going to be so i think we need to be clear keep about asking that. it and to be clarified yes mm -hmm. in other words if there's a complaint where's right. the, who's the who phone number and who do we call first or who do we call second right um, we have an evening or weekend function and say there is a strong odor during that growing phase and we have families and kids here mm -hmm. I, I mean there's probably they're not going to be able to remove that odor immediately but we need to let someone know someone who <coughs> the building inspector or the board of health maybe they want to come down and smell it themselves if i don't know if they take our word for it mm -hmm. i i just think it needs to be clear mm -hmm. and there needs to be a plan okay so they you left it with this the zoning board explained how they thought it would happen but I, it wasn't they didn't seem to be involved in this okay. process um, once they approve it it's out of their hands mm -hmm. uh, they're going to review it in a year to make sure they're meeting their criteria the guy on the zoning board said well i, I don't think they're going to go through all this trouble and not meet, continue to meet the criteria but mm -hmm. i just want to make sure just in case you know mm -hmm. maybe the first year they do meet it and then they start slacking off i don't know i don't know how these businesses run it's the first one it's very close to the school and i think we need to be you know Vigilant. on top of it yeah okay especially if the wind blows out of the south wind blows out of the south you'll get you could you could you, you could the neighbors you could, are going to care you could you can you could probably smell it if it blew out of the south you know if they something broke down or mm -hmm. or something or but if it blew any other direction it's, yeah. it's just like yankee candle i mean right. unless it blows out of the south southwest you're never going to smell it here because it's smell it a lot. I mean, all, all the time. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's yeah. that's. <laughs> it's but in the same time path. It's fine. It I don't want out. the same thing to happen. It's in yeah. the same path, so yeah. I think it's a candle. Just call Yankee Candle. The other thing is crank it up a little bit. that Chrissy brought up to me that I didn't think about it because when you look at the plans or their diagrams, they're going to have a fence around the, the greenhouses that's going to have barbed wire. Um, yeah it's just not gonna it's gonna look like a prison I, I it's not gonna and our kids play out here and can see that so I don't I don't know if we have any control over that I don't think we do but it would have been nice if they put bushes Greener. or trees to yes. cover that well didn't the town of Waitley require Yankee to plant large tall bushes in front of those silos I'm not sure I believe so could well, we, we can. I thing? mean, the select board oversees all of this, right? So we could request the select board to clarify the process for reporting. Um, My thing is, are they going to be building new? Uh, they're moving high tech greenhouses. No. Or are they no, just going to use what's there? Because what's like there is just your ordinary there. vegetable, little uh, Quonset hut type of. But they're going to be shifting two of them somehow. I think. I think it was. Or two cutting of them. off part of it or something. Yeah, because they didn't meet the setback requirements. Right. So they're lopping them off one side and putting it on the, the back end, moving it closer to yeah. us. I think it was like going to be maybe 607 feet from the school. With requirement was 500 feet. 607. Six. I I don't know if that's She's exactly. Very okay. <laughs> I, She's a number one person. from my memory, and but one of the points it I met know, the criteria. I know one of the points was 900 because they were going from one of the corners over here to the corner over there, 
when they were talking the other night for setbacks or whatever. One was 900, might have been from that corner over there to it, not to this corner over here. But they meet the set, I guess they, they met all the they requirements, met all this, yeah, they requirements yes. and stuff. So. But I think they're also trying to be good neighbors. So like for the uh, greenery, I think we could ask, we could certainly ask if they would consider putting in some sort of, you know, vegetation. That would make it more I mean, for security purposes, anybody can go up to the fence and take a pair of cutters and cut through the fence and get into any of these greenhouses. And then, and then you really can't put. Right in the middle. Yeah, but but there again, they're growing in the other ones. But there again, it's it's like if we cut a hole in the fence and there's no lights, and I could sneak in, stealth, go in and take. You know, if you had lights, at least it's a little bit deterrent. But there again, if you have lights, the neighbors don't want the lights, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to put up on different sides in the greenhouse. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're going to have to put up some type of uh, netting or something or uh, blockage so the light doesn't shine back into these people's backyards. It's one of the criteria, no light pollution, no odor from the property line. Yep. Yes. Yeah, the neighbors have the similar concerns that we do. Yeah. Yeah. And they're closer. So, so I'm concerned that the parents of the children who go to school here don't really know that this is going on. No, it, yeah. you know, I think one parent showed up the night of the zoning board that was behind us near the doorway and stuff. I heard him, I heard him saying something. They were required to notify the abutters. We we didn't actually get notification. Well, the town, but was the town did get town notification. Right. Um, but I don't, us, so. I don't know what the requirements were on notifying yeah. the rest of the town. Just well, it's been going on for a couple no, there's of years. talk. I mean, there's, there must be talk between parents. I mean, many don't know. I don't think. Yeah, they've not, people aren't paying attention. It doesn't mean that they haven't been, they've had quite a few open meetings about it. It's just that I don't think as many people are paying attention until it becomes more real. And the address is Christian mm -hmm. Lane, so I don't think people are associating that with the school because that's way over there. You know, they don't. I don't know if they realize the property abuts. I, I, you know, as long as I, as long as they follow the requirements, especially you know the air pollution with the right filters and stuff, you know, I think it'll be fine. But if they don't, then then somebody's going to have to somebody's going to have to address right. it. The agent they're of the Board of Health or the Board of here. Health, if that's what, if they're the ones, if we find out they're the ones, then maybe they need to be making periodically checks of, of the property or of the school for the south wind. Do they smell anything? Yeah, that's what we have to clarify. Yeah. So I'm hearing that, um, would you like me to write a letter to the select board asking for clarification of the process if there is issues uh, moving forward? Yeah, I think yeah, that if, would be if approved, moving forward with that so that we are have some so ease know, so that we have some ease um we are put it we are put to some ease regarding that there is a process that if there is an issue that will be addressed and not lost in right. a small school that it can not be taken care of right away and, in the moment okay <clears throat> and not just for issues that come up but that there's some sort of periodic monitoring or something right we don't want to be the ones having to monitor everything right Chris, you'll go out yep. there with a monitor every morning. Well, I just don't want school. the kids to smell it. I mean, that's the yeah. only. That's the main thing. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I prefer they not look at something that appears to be prison-like next door, but you know, the the questions will come from kids when they can smell it. So that's my my main concern. Okay, that's great. So if you don't, if you could draft that, that'd be awesome. I'll draft it. Get it out here. Yep. Um. New business, school lunch, financial update, is that? Yep, you should have in front of you a, a profit loss statement. Really straightforward. Um, it should look like this. Put it in your spot. It's in your pile right there, this? maybe? Right yeah. there? Should be right in the pile somewhere. Yeah. It's just a single yeah. page. Um, Basically, um, we are in good shape. Um, you know, you start off the year with the, uh, we've always talked about it's very difficult to um, break even in a small school when it takes two people to serve lunch. Um, and, you know, it's more personnel than needed for the actual the food per service hour. Um, but if you look at that, you can see we're in the, in the positive by $104 through November, and that includes some of the early supply items um, yes, you, we were talking earlier about other things. You buy a lot of your supplies early. Um, it also includes the software bill, 
um, and a longevity bonus to an employee. So some of those things that are one-time costs were early on. So um, you know we're in a good we're in a good spot right there. And That's great. This is you know an account that you know traditionally has gone over. Um, we've had to find other ways to um, you know, support it and bail it out. Um, mm -hmm. and as you'll see in many food service things. So we're in good shape here. They're um, doing a good job for food service hour and um, you know. I think the, Mike, and I don't know how often you want these reports. I'm thinking maybe every three months, kind of give the mm -hmm. updates unless something alarming yeah. happens. Um, that's but that's kind so of So we're pretty right. even right now, which is unusual. Yeah, we're pretty right? even, and, and just as a, when we talk about things on a whole, the, across the district, almost every building is. Uh, that's there's only, there's only so one building that has The new model is, The new model is working, yeah. Um, yeah. and food sales are up um, in most buildings. I forget if they are waiting. Um, yes, number of sales have gone up, and we are waiting right now to do the online purchasing system. Mm -hmm. um, they're hoping to have that in place after January 1st, but it has to go through the town treasurer, so um, we just have to coordinate that and get there. But it is going in other schools, and parents can elect to pay online, and it just kind of right. gets rid of. Is that with their credit card? You know, they can put it in the credit card. There is a there is a convenience fee. fee. Yeah. Um, I, I know I pay in my kid's school, but. It's one of those things you put a credit card in and it bills you every every it's three easy. months. Or that kind of, it makes it does make life easy. And although some people, if they don't want to do the convenience fee, they can still do the old okay. sign the check, have the kids bring it in. But um, you, I think we'll find that many people will, um, will you know will take advantage of that service just to make put their old debit card in there. And, yeah, yep. that'd be great. And also, you know, you can see when your kids are buying lunch, and you know, you can have an idea of what's going on. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Getting. Not taking their money and go buying candy or something. No, like they, that. they don't offer that here. Well, no. I mean, no. After school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you, give them, if you give them cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah you give cash. Them cash. Yes. Yeah, well, that's great. <coughs> Good job right. getting it up in yes. shape because this has been a perennial challenge. So we'll see where it ends up at the end of the right, year. Right, we'll see. And it does, it is a, um, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, we're struggling with other um, systems if someone's out with a sick time, we have to give them substitutes. So it is kind of a, it's a very, it's a very, yeah, there's a very thin line margin. So, but at least, I, mean, I think the goal to the school is that you don't have a huge loss. Right. So even if we do show up in the red slightly, that's not unheard of for, you know, I think, no, I think Judy the can jump in. It. It's not unheard of at all for school systems. If you look around, some of them have gone way over. Thousands yes. of dollars. That's yes. thousands, right. but if we can get school close to services. being. Right. The ban of existence. Right. All right. Yeah. This is no. I think we've always thought we had a good budget choice. for a loss. But right. The smaller the loss, the better. That's that's the goal. I think that's and the, and I think that's a realistic goal. To cover this. Right. So and I think if we can, if our goal is to get as the small amount of loss as possible, and then we end up in the positive. That's the kind that's of goal. Right. But we're in a good shot spot right now. Good. Excellent. Okay. Um, budget. Budget time frame. You should in your packet that was from me. Um, there is a budget um, calendar, calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and you can kind of just, it's very similar to the ones you've seen in years past, those have been years past, um, just kind of give us a timeline of what's coming up. Um, as you can see, we, with our end result of um, town meeting on April 30th, um, principal's meeting next, this week. This is not next week. This is this week for the um, going through the budgets and starting to prepare what the, the needs are Whitley projecting for next year. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, next month we start the, the first round of looking at it and then, you know, all the way through. So, mm -hmm. um, do we want, do we want to change our, do we want to change our meeting to talk about It's probably that? a good time to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so January 7th is a Monday. Um, if you want to move that to January 8th on a Tuesday, I just know I'm going to just project out there that first thing Monday mornings, and I know yeah, families no. and such, it's very hard <laughs> on Monday morning to get up and get going compared to a Tuesday. So I don't know if you if you want to move it to the 8th. <coughs> it's your pleasure. Do you have anything else? All right. Um, moving it over one day. Um, Does that work for you? We have, I have Frontier that night, but that doesn't affect the morning one. So. Why had it been moved to the night in the first place? Oh, right away. I, so what happened was, is you know, to um, 
to reduce the number of nights out, but with negotiations, two different negotiations, that's not happened at all, but um, was we were combining, doing several meetings in one day. Um, and so um, the trade-off, and I did a trade-off not knowing what the, how this was going to work out and the nervousness around doing these morning meetings, um, if there was nervousness, um, was that, you know, during budget season, we'll go back to the traditional model, have five night meetings for January, February, and March. Mm -hmm. to the five schools. So if this committee is liking the way the morning, the morning meetings are going, you know, I am all for, I'm all for, you know, yeah, one, we'll, one let's do January and then, yeah, let's try it. And then I mean, at January we, we can make January. a decision on February if, if that's, yeah. if that's working well for us and unless we get a complaint mm -hmm. from somebody from the town that really wanted to come at that night, they, you know, if they're retired, they Come in the morning. Do the budget meetings tend to attract more of the public? Not no. so much. No. Not here. No. I mean, and they can. You guys can make that decision. You look at the March fourth. Yeah, we do the, the public, public hearing. hearing. Maybe the public hearing should happen should that evening. We kind of, you know, maybe we mark that. that that's when we won't move. Um, well, we just have to um, wherever the meeting gets posted, make sure it gets changed. Right. So none of these have been posted yet. So, okay. um, so Donald, and so Donald, we will floor. post it after this meeting. We kind of post from month to month and um, if there's a change we can post that so if okay, you so liked so how do people feel about January we'll Tuesday January 8th at 8 a.m. Um, and quite frankly if you want to go to the second week you can even do that it, it's I think I don't know why well that's the second Tuesday that is the, the second, second Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's Frontier fine. too that would be better the same for me the 8th we'll kill two birds one stone it's a long day for you guys I'll be retired by then. So <laughs> yeah, you, I can take said a nap. That a I can take a nap in between. Are you gonna be away? Uh, no. Is that towards the end of the year? Uh, no, I'm not. I no. thought you were going to Japan or something. No, that's been canceled. She's they moved her to San Diego. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so we agreed to meet on at eight a.m. on the eighth. Eight. <coughs> and then we'll see how. If we need more time, I mean, I, I'm actually, and you tell us, but not anticipating a huge budget deliberation given how things are going. No, you just don't know what I'm until I yeah. until we hear more from you guys. You know when we get the budget books? Is it next meeting? I don't know. I have to work that out. So it's, this is I'm just looking so at budget. Being, I right. would say so. We usually last year we had three versions, and that would. How's Correct. it going? Can you tell us how it's going? Well, we're meeting this They're week with the principals, starting. and we're okay. just starting that and process. And so, brand new at this, okay. so it looks um, good from here. <laughs> and Judy's been brought on board to help us with that, so she's Thank God we got Judy. <laughs> yeah, um, she's you know, been the, through the it a couple times. Yes, there's a already few. a built-in increase in the salary. Yeah. Right for the teachers, like that's the yeah, biggest that's expense, that right? We have to cover. And that's well, right that's now. Been, and that's where we're, we're that in negotiation. We're in negotiation, oh, so right. we're going to have to put okay. a, a holding number in place for there, and that, that gets oh. kind of a little trickier. Like a worst case scenario right. type of thing. Okay. We can not worst case is just consider, we usually put a conservative yes. number in yes. there to hold that place moving forward yeah, based on yeah. past practices. And so, I see. you know, we'll build that. And like I said, I, this is, I'm just being blunt. I haven't been through this process and I'm working with TMS um, who hasn't been with this process with us. So us. Yeah, there'll yeah. be a little bit. So okay. please mm -hmm. feel free to vocalize that, no you know, you like this or, I know Kitty. That's good. We ask a lot of questions. If you yeah. ask a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. And we'll and figure we'll out. Right now what uh, we're doing at TMS <coughs> is we're building sort of an Excel budget master so that scenarios can be played out, okay. those kinds of things, so we can do some, some things that will help you kind of work through this whole process. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's where we're at there. So next time you'll bring to us sort of your initial thoughts on the budget, is what you're saying, <coughs> with probably mm -hmm. your first draft day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Did you mean wish list? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is good to get out there what we want. Yeah, so we, 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 there's some of it is wish list in the sense of it, because yeah. we have to, we start looking at percentages and the things have to adjust, some of the things that. See what we can afford and what we need to ask for. Want versus needs. Always, always remember, you know, if you're talking two and a half, one in seven, you know, one in three quarters is going to be new salaries and steps and yeah. stuff. There's not a lot of, there's, there's a not no, a lot of room That's the thing. You have to for, cover for new items first. or want items or something like that. 
before. Unfortunately. But then there's also the capital budget process for more sort of one-time things. So mm -hmm. <coughs> you want to think about what the needs are. Mm -hmm. When are the salary negotiations? Right now. Started. Uh, part of my report. Is yeah. it? Oh, okay. So I'll give it to you. It's all. He can't tell you. Yet. I can. <laughs> I can tell you, but yeah. it's all written down yeah. on that yeah, sheet, no so problem. it'll be all there for you. <laughs> okay. So we changed Tomorrow. our meeting. We'll get into it in January. Yep. You got that, Mary? There's nothing. No pre. Nothing particular to talk about yet. No. All right. Oh, that's coming. Okay. So we'll move on to the reports, which we have the capital. So I had added capital as a report. Right, but we just didn't update on that. So, we update on that. So, <coughs> I don't have any updates. Anybody? Do you have a collab any collab um, update? We had a meeting last month. It was, there wasn't anything we really need to report. We did their annual report and their annual audit that we voted and all their standard stuff. Um, year and hire and separation and, um, so that's it. Okay. Um, so, Chrissy? Sure. Ms. Curtin? Uh, so, just a couple things going on here. Um, fourth grade is doing a giving tree project. Those of you who are parents probably already know what that's about. Um, so, they kicked it off last week and they're requesting um, a new of holiday gifts which come in for the teachers to send in uh, non-perishable food items mm. and then the students can designate that they're donating it in honor of someone on the staff. Um, so we have a tree full of tags in the cafeteria in many boxes of food that have been donated. So um, they're doing a great job with that. And the fourth graders are even, they turned it into a, a math activity as well. They're graphing how many things they get every day and um, eventually they'll weigh that and figure mm -hmm. out all of that um, and um, Chief Savini happened to be here when we were kicking it off so we sort of pulled him into it um, <laughs> as a way to make it a little more exciting for the kids that the, the goal is to fill up his, his cruiser. Oh, uh, the new big cruiser? The, like, I think so. Ford Explorer? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the global leaders are also doing a a drive to collect fleece um, to, to donate um, to keep the, the pets who are awaiting adoption comfortable. <laughs> um, the school council met last week uh, to review the proposed school improvement plan. Mm -hmm. um, it was accepted by the council after a couple of additions. Um, and I'll go over that in a minute. Um, we we sort of got into talking about um, you know what the role of the school council might be and we ended up discussing the opportunities that we provide for kids to um, to explore their own interests and, and talents aside from the sort of academic instructional time so mm -hmm. um, we wanted to take a good look at that um, a little more creatively and, and create more opportunities um, so the school improvement plan is in front of you. It is essentially the same except where you see the highlighted areas. There's nothing that's changed in goal one. Um, but in goal yeah. two. You mean this highlighted? Yeah, two, shaded? three, and four, um, there is a parent family piece. So initially, I had talked to them about adding a fifth goal get related to um, family and community engagement, mm -hmm. but they felt like it was a better idea to keep it at four goals so that we don't take on too much and mm -hmm. then just add a parent component to the goals that are already there. That's good. I like that. When you're saying sharing, uh, you're talking about their own child's scores and writing to yep. the family? Yep. Okay. I like them getting the writing. It's fun to read what they write. You learn a lot about their thinking about yeah. it. Good morning, everyone. The time in the office is 8.56.
Today's soup will be chicken noodle soup. I have a couple of announcements. We'd like to congratulate Emily Candelaria. She auditioned and made it into District Festival Orchestra. She will be performing at the UMass Fine Arts Center. Congratulations, Emily. Wow. Also, the Global Leaders will meet at 1220 in the library today. Could everyone stand for the pledge? And today we have Colin and here and start off slow and at the end the last sentence <laughs> that's great so I, I thank you for being with us yeah it was it, we actually had a great conversation it was nice to sit down and hear the parent perspective on things mm -hmm. okay. so should we take a preliminary vote to, on the plan unless others people have questions or anything I'll make a, a preliminary Acceptance of the school improvement plan. Second. Okay. So, Mary, they're doing a preliminary vote, and then they're going to ask to put on the agenda to the official vote because we didn't get on the agenda this time. So, just make sure that the meeting notes reflect such. <coughs> um, two other little things: we had polar express night on on Saturday night as a chance for parents to drop mm -hmm. their kids off and have a night out. Um, kids had a good time. Yeah. Um, you know, the parents expressed that those three hours went by really quickly. <laughs> could we do it longer? They, they didn't go by that quickly here. <laughs> yeah. Next time we could do an overnight. Yeah. Overnight. Right, overnight. Wow. Sure. I'm just kidding. Who was the, who was the chaperones? There were um, six staff members that I was able to coax into giving up a Saturday oh, night, Mary being one yeah. of them. Thank you, um, Thank you. And thanks to Lola because when the movie, uh, ended a little bit early um she was in there entertaining the, the troops so they were dancing they were playing games and kids had a good time how many kids did you have no like 50. Wow. Wow. wow that's great yeah and i found out that night that they even included um younger siblings of children who go to school here so we had a two-year-old wow. <laughs> that's great we had to play man-to-man -man defense on that one wow. <laughs> Um, and then on December 19th, we'll have our uh, winter concert, and I trust mm -hmm. you'll all be here. <laughs> Are you retired by then? No. No. You must have some sick days you have to use up. No, nope, all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Use them all. A couple vacation days, though. He's got to be signed up for the spring concert. Um, <laughs> and so we'll have the typical instrumental music and singing but the global leaders are also pre preparing little presentations about um celebrations of life around oh. the world oh, cool. okay. um and i don't know if we want to add this to my report i have um, some some yes. folks who want to play or should we continue and then invite them in at the end why don't we do it at the end so, um we're almost done serious yeah, I missed the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, he twisted some arms yesterday. Okay. All right, so I passed it out to you. Should be like something like this that says spring is recording. Mm -hmm. no, do you know? I don't remember that. It was I definitely a response. Oh, yeah, so you know, they're probably the whole she, staff. I you got her whole staff. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. She came in and was like, I'm here. I'm, okay. <laughs> you you no, I um, just updates on some of these are updates and stuff I've already been talking to you about. Um, with the Christian Lane sale and the file storage, we're moving the files next week. And wow. so we will be out of the building by the end of the month. And I reached out to the buyer yesterday. Um, and he's going to be talking with the town about what the closing date will be for that mm -hmm. building. So Where are the files going again? Um, in the frontier. So oh. we, I took over a closet oh, there. Um, I just, you know, we had an arm wrestle the principal to get the closet, but um, 
So it's going to go there, and uh, and then we do some weeding and, and organizing them and getting them in good shape. Are we still trying to shred and, and get? That's what I mean by, we, by, that's okay. what I mean by weeding. Meaning okay. you go through, you take yeah, out what's not necessary, and so it's is Rhonda place. is Rhonda heading up this whole? And Rhonda is is taking the lead. So, okay. um, okay. so there's going to be an area where we have permit files and then most of the other files, student files and some student rec. Uh, uh, employee records and such maybe for seven years there's different timelines and different so some are rotating and some are permanent did we have to buy any like new boxes we did okay we bought Good. boxes and shelving and stuff now this is all coming out and i'll get the savings um to you um hopefully by next month but we put a significant amount we're going to pay a whole private firm to come in and do the whole thing um and i just didn't see the justification for that much um it's a nice thing to have done but given what i where i thought the files were in this our staff members in central office, they felt that they could get into a spot where they can make it usable, um, not go to the, you know, microfishing and that kind of stuff, um, um, which was not, everybody wasn't on board with that. So there'll be some money um, savings there that will come back. I'll figure out, we'll have to figure out how that goes back to the, it goes back to the town or goes back to the yeah. school, um, being a central office expense. Um, Collective bargaining negotiations are underway for Frontier. Um, we've already had a, our first meeting and set the next four meetings, and the Union 38 is initial meeting is tomorrow. Okay. So we'll do our meet and greet tomorrow afternoon, and at that point they'll schedule the meetings moving forward from there. Um, also moving forward, there will be um, executive session will be on all the agendas moving forward during negotiations. So if there's ever time we need to. If you want about updates anything. about where yeah. things are at, we can go to executive okay. session for that moving forward. So there's nothing to report this time because we, really have, we haven't even had a strategy session, which we'll be doing at this following the initial meeting. How long does the negotiation usually last, or is it it's unknown, I'm sure, right? A, um, couple, a month, I think? Well, depending on, so scheduling, I mean, the, the scheduling of this one is obviously probably on the first, you do a meet and greet where you, you establish ground rules, mm -hmm. and then you have your initial first real meeting where the proposals are put on the table. That will probably happen in January. So I imagine the goal will probably be to get it done by the end of February. Okay. Um, the Frontier one right now, the first four meetings are at the end of January, and the hope is to be close at that point. Both sides agree that that's our hope. Uh -huh. um, so it just matters how often we meet. We're meeting every other week. You're going to do probably four or five, even in, even in a um, successful you know, progressing negotiation. Yeah. It can go much longer if you hit whatever. And so there's two there's two happening at the same time. So just for clarity, they're back to back. So, mm -hmm. but they're um, on the teacher side. They have different representation where we have the same representation for the school side. So we'll do an hour yeah. to an hour and a half of one. And then the group will switch, and then an hour and a half of the other. And you know, okay. see it, one and the other. The IAs is one, and the teachers is the other. Okay. So and they're gonna. I don't know what the Union 3D is going to do. Frontier decided to flip it, so there's um, every other time it's going to be A first, then C, then C, then A. So, but we don't flip the person that goes to lead or something. No, so, you guys will be there. So we're there either way. It's like it's, yeah. So for us, it's very it's very simple in the sense of showing up, but <coughs> it's just if you just so you have an understanding of what yeah. we're talking about it. Yeah. And so what's A and C? Is one of them teachers? A is one teacher, C is IA. It's just the name of the contract. Yeah. If it's, uh, unit A is. is there a B? Used to be, oh. a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, um, and that follows if you had a custodial union or um, that kind of thing, or admin. Mm -hmm. What's an admin number, letter? Uh, admin used to be B back in the day. Okay. <laughs> so if Chrissy wants to union Can I start up start my own union? All, right. all the Waitley principles. Yeah. <laughs> all the Waitley yes. principles. <laughs> Tough group. All right. Um, the uh, business uh, manager service has been posted and will be um, accepting up until the 21st okay. um, bids for that, as we talked about. At the, I think we talked about that at the joint meeting, mm -hmm. just kind of FYI that that's all set to go moving forward. Okay. And then, as just a reminder, January 22nd is the joint meeting. Remember that joint meeting had to be put on to, to have the, the two major things on. The, the topic would be the interim superintendent <laughs> and the um, business manager position for the following year. Okay. Um, and what the plan is for what school committee wants to do at that point. Um, <clears throat> uh, last week I attended the um, superintendent's um, academic award, uh, what was it, a uh, ceremony at uh, Franklin Tech and Emily Laws, a senior at Frontier. Mm -hmm. 
receive that award, and that, that's usually presented at the Frontier meeting, but it's on my overall notes. And so congratulations to her. She's a fantastic kid. She's doing a lot of great things. And, um, great GPA. Got a great GPA yeah. and a great, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and she's, and she's involved in just about everything at all times, and so it's, um, wow. she's at the school more than anybody else. So um, what, what's the criteria for the award? How do you <clears throat> um, I can, you get um, nominated? I, get, I take, it's done, um, basically you're looking at the um, you know, top 10% of the class and um, they're nominated by the different administrators in the building. Mm -hmm. So I, I took four nominations and um, met with students and interviewed them mm -hmm. and looked at their, what they're doing and they mm -hmm. talk about themselves and then nice. I select one. Okay. So, Is that so. more than GPA? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I look at the full community service, GPA, what else you're doing around the school, mm -hmm. involvement, community involvement, and you know, overall that, so, yeah. Um, and the last thing, I have a handout, um, one handout, no, you should have two handouts. One is the, um, I thought it was nice to pass on that the select board of Conway um, wrote a note to um, the Commissioner Jeff Riley regarding the expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. Um, and this was kind of, this is nothing I knew they were up to, so I thought it was nice that they um, were keeping an eye on things, and um, I just thought it was an example of what's going on there. And I also included, it says draft on it, but the collaborative, um, Bill Deal, or William Deal wrote a, also wrote a note to um, the Office of Charter Schools and School Redesign about um, the concerns about the expansion of the Chinese Immersion Charter School. And it's just, I thought the the factual information that's in this, um, mm -hmm. I thought was very interesting just to kind of keep keep you all abreast of what's going on in the politics of that. Um, and it's not really the against the charter school, it's the charter school funding and how that's affecting, mm -hmm. how it's affecting us in the Valley versus other, um, Versus other places in the state um, where it's very it's very different in the funding thing. So, um, so are, they, are they about. getting it considered for another expansion? I thought they already tried twice. They they try they they can they try every year. Down. So oh, they got so turned down. I don't know if, if it's indefinite, but they right now they're again trying this year, okay. and so um, the area superintendents um, are, are working together to educate the state about where things stand. Mm -hmm. um, with that and how if they were to become larger what that means the impact it would have on the area schools especially right. given the funding model toward um, charter schools so um, have we met with our new representatives at all in the area because we have new brand new I have not yeah. I have not uh, yeah, them. We'll have to get yeah. them to um, I can tell you, they're not in office yet until January but you know, you know, I'll bring it up. Uh, the superintendents of Franklin County do a roundtable. Mm, um, that might be a good uh, place for them. About once a month, so I can see if that might be a nice mm -hmm. time for them to come in yeah. and just do a, just a meet and greet to start things well, off. It's, it's an important topic. And, yep. Yeah. Um, I also yesterday received, we were just talking about um, educating the school committee, keeping them up to, to, to par about what's going on with um, enrollment and trends. And so I got this thing. And so I don't know if you want me to send it to you digitally or if you'd like a, a copy, but there's a lot of graphs and that kind of thing, but it just basically talks about where schools are in Franklin and Hampshire County regarding choice mm -hmm. and enrollment trends. Um, and I think it's very interesting for Waitley because Waitley is one of those, is one of, you can see the other elementary schools are in a similar spot where there's a large number of choice. Mm -hmm. um, and in and with the, yeah. And um, it just kind of shows that overall. So right. I don't know if you want it digitally or I can make copies of it. Whatever. Or I can just pass around, then you can decide. Can you make? Can you make? Can you make me a copy? Or I if can. it goes on, if you put it on, I can I can print it at work or whatever. Yeah. So I can. Yeah, so, can so well, yeah. yeah so we definitely would like I just got it yesterday, and I was like, well, before I make a, a ton of colored copies, because it has to be in color for you to mm -hmm. understand the graphs. Um, so it's just showing. So that what's the headline? Is the enrollment is going down in well, general? The enrollment's going down <laughs> in general, and it's just kind of uh, where. You can see the different communities that are affected by choice mm -hmm. um, and communities that are hurt by choice. Um, just kind of, and you can see the trends, and then also the charter schools. It shows where the introduction of charter schools come in and what their trends are on the population mm -hmm. um, of students. And so, 
Can I just give you a snap? It's, it's, it's data. Right. All the lines are going this way, which yeah. is a little, that's what's mainly challenging. Yeah. And I think you also have to remember if, when you look through the data that um, some of it's misleading when you look at it quickly because we're, we're comparing, when you look at other area schools that may be regionalized K to 12, mm -hmm. their numbers are much larger than ours. So you've got to kind of look at proportionates when you, because we, you know, obviously are individual by each district and then Frontier is right. a separate one. So when you're looking at Frontier and you're comparing it to... Amherst that has three. Right. Or Amherst Not Amherst would be a good example, but yeah. it would be like comparing it toward um, like Mohawk that's Mohawk. K to 12. So okay. um, okay. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, it has the public, the charter schools. And, and the charter schools and such there too. So I thought yeah. it informative and like I said, I got it yesterday and then I said, I'll bring it in and see if anybody wants it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So just let me know. I think that's all I have. Okay. 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 You want to adjourn after the concert or before the concert? Well, I would love to know. Administrators to tell me what's the right. I mean, before for performances during before. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need that to be. Have them come on in. Okay. Thank you.